Well, it finally happened. We were making love last night, and I called Steve Patrick. It's not like I can't tell the difference between a 25-year-old body and a 47-year-old body. I mean, I've caught myself so many times before, but I guess I got caught up in the heat of the moment. I don't know. I mean, Steve was very nice about it, but I felt awful. Kind of put a damper on things, you know. He didn't stay the night. I've got to make an appointment with my gynecologist. I think it's time for another tune-up. I don't know. I've, just, I've been under a lot of stress lately, and I think it's beginning to take its toll. I can't even count the gray hairs anymore. You don't uh, look gray. I wasn't talking about my head. Everybody in my office is so young. I feel like I'm from a totally different generation. I guess I am. Why is it all right for a, a man in his 40s to go out with a girl in her 20s, whereas I feel like Mrs. Robinson? Why do you care what anyone else thinks? I don't know. I've always cared what everybody thinks. I care what my office mates think. I care what my mother thinks. I, I care what the gardener thinks. I've always been like that. I didn't even kiss a boy until I was 17, so I was afraid I'd do it wrong and he'd think I was inexperienced. But uh, when you finally kissed the boy... I must have done it wrong. They never asked me out again. I think the downside to having no brothers and going to an all-girls school is... boys always seem like such a mystery, you know? Of course, growing up, Dory and I had Ross McCartney next door. That kid would pull down his pants at the drop of a hat. <laughs> I ran into him the other day. He's a psychiatrist in Tarzana. I wish I could just go one day without thinking about Patrick. Our 10th anniversary's coming up soon. Or rather, it would have been our 10th anniversary. First one since the separation. I'd just like to run away to Morocco or Tangier, or somewhere, and just let the day pass like it never happened. I wonder if he ever calls her Rosie. Living in time and feeling every moment. Do I walk into tomorrow and never look behind? In a perfect world, everyone's dreams would all come true. Your time, 97 today, hotter than the weekend. Schmeiss those fall fashions, it's summertime. So you never really got a full view of the gunman's face, did you? Well, I, I saw him before he hit me. And you testified that 
The gunman was pointing a gun directly in your face at that point. Yes. And it's fair to say that this entire incident took, what, five, ten seconds tops? Hmm, maybe ten seconds. And yet you were able to study his face? Well, I didn't study it. Answer yes or no, please. No. Dr. Atkinson, is there a light in your driveway? Yes, there's a uh, floodlight above the garage. But your car wasn't parked in front of the garage when the other car pulled up behind you. It was parked just inside the gate, wasn't it? Yes, but there's still plenty of light. There's a street lamp out on the corner. Uh, doctor, do you have any trees in front of your house? Mm, no. Just a hedge. A rather tall hedge. Fifteen feet tall, to be exact. And the street lamp was across the street on the other side of the hedge, was it not, Doctor? Well, yes, but I... So what you're stating, actually, is there was very little light shining directly on your driveway that night. Objection. Counsel is testifying. Sustain. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Seeing that it's Friday afternoon and getting late, this seems like a good place to break. This court is in recess until 9 a.m. Monday morning. See you, Mindy. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Ramus, have you had a chance to look at those photos yet? <laughs> yeah, how do they look? Great. I'll hold. Hot date? Yeah. I have a life. Could have fooled me. Uh, listen, which one of the officers should I put on the stand? Shaheen or Lazar? No. And le no, let's go with Shaheen. I don't need a big mouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you Monday. Bye. Sorry to make your weekend. What? The usual. Wedding reception. Voluntary manslaughter. Guess the groom didn't like party crashers. I'm in the middle of a trial. You gotta see Ben. Yeah, it's Friday night. He's at Shul. I'm out of here. Have a nice weekend. Always to breath. Hey, we're all going to the zebra room for a little dancing. Wanna come? Dancing? <laughs> Oh, I haven't been dancing since the hustle. Yeah, well, whatever. Have a good one. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe next time. right below the Tetons. He said we loved it. Boots are vintage. You mean someone else's sweaty feet have occupied them first? I'll take them. Well, at least they match the hat. 
That'll be $483 with tax. Cash or credit? Cash. Dad gave me $500 for my birthday. $500? Yeah. Couldn't he have bought you a present? He's in Vail with Bridget. Besides, I mean, he wouldn't know what to get me. He still thinks of me as a child. Well, Steve wants us to go away. Away? Yeah. Where? Oh, Mexico, Laguna, Jackson Hole. <clears throat> I think a weekend on Three Mile Island would suit him at this point. Does it have a good beach? I hope you're kidding. Can you grab my purse? Yeah. Ooh. Hi, Rose. Can you get the blue bag? Yeah. And the pink bag? Jeez, Doreen. Only having lunch. You think you got enough stuff here? Just wanted to be prepared. With a newborn, you never can tell what might happen. Okay. Here. Hi, thanks. Can I get you guys anything? I'll have a uh, fish sandwich, hold the fries. I'll have the same, but with fries and ketchup and a chocolate malt. Me too. Okay. How are the kids doing with the little baby? Fine. Marissa wants to take her to school for show and tell. <laughs> Todd doesn't even know she exists. But for David. <laughs> How is Todd? Oh. Todd feels totally rejected by the baby. She's not terribly interested in anyone without breasts at the moment. Poor Todd. Poor Todd is right. He's like a frustrated 13-year-old just doesn't know what it's like to have someone hanging on you all day. The last thing I want is someone hanging on me all night. Speaking of which, how's Mr. Endurance? Enduring. He likes me too much. So what's the problem? I don't know. It wasn't supposed to be a serious relationship, you know? It, it just happened. He's different than I thought he was. Who'd you think he was? I thought he was someone who understood what I was going through. I, he was just supposed to make me feel good. Now he's becoming... What? A human being with feelings of his own? Oh, give me a break. I treat him like a human being. It's just that he's starting to need things from me. Well, what did you expect? I didn't expect anything. That's the problem. One minute he was doing my shelves, the next minute he's... You know. If you've never been divorced, you don't know what it's like to face an empty bed every night. Do grocery shopping for one. Turn on the TV as soon as you get home, just so you don't have to listen to the songs. I was lonely. And uh, Steve fills the void. He's a real person, not a security blanket. What if he falls in love with you? Well, he's not gonna fall in love with me. Why? Because you don't want him to? Would you get off my back? Who are you, Jiminy Cricket? I'm doing the best I can. All right, it's all I can do to deal with the life I've got. I don't need you telling me how I'm blowing it. Hi, Jeff. For God's sake, what are they going to fix the air conditioning? It's fixed. You know, you can lower your own body temperature with your mind. Biofeedback. My biofeedback hasn't worked since I lost my mood ring. <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead, laugh. You don't see me sweating. No, he just glows. 
Detective Shaheen, and prior to June 18th, Dr. Atkinson had been to the station on two separate occasions to look at photos of possible suspects. On those two dates, he viewed between 300 and 500 photos without being able to identify anybody, correct? Yes, that's correct. After two unsuccessful attempts at photographic identification, you then put together a third array of eight photos. Yes. Of those eight photos, seven of them are from the Rampart Division, and one of them is from North Hollywood. I guess so. If I could direct your attention, please, to this one photo. The back of the photograph indicates its source, does it not? Uh, North Hollywood. Now, officer, this photo, the one of my client, Julio Angulo, the one with the light background, is the one from North Hollywood. Yes. Whereas the other seven photos with the dark background are all from Rampart Division. Objection. Overruled. Your Honor, at this point, I ask that these eight photos be shown to the jury. L.A. Public Defender's Office. Little gas. Uh, heartburn. Been stuck here since 6 a.m. trying to come up with a defense for two camp counselors and dare the teenagers drink a whole bottle of whiskey. Since when are you doing misdemeanors? The kid died. Oh. He's been in. I don't know. You know what I like about you, Rosie? You have a healthy appetite. What's that supposed to mean? It's a compliment. Thanks. So, what do you want? It's about the Angulo trial. Right. I know. Trial anxiety. I'm hardly a virgin, Ben. Hey, come on. I could spot it a mile away. I beg your pardon? Look, there's a lot more on the line here than some CEO's bank account. Besides, with all the emphasis on plea bargains, you don't get a chance to go to bat that often. That's what's keeping you up at night, isn't it? No. I'm almost at the end of the case, and I'm thinking about putting Angulo on the stand. He has a strong alibi. A strong him. alibi? He went to a drive-in with some schmuck. Excuse me. <laughs> OK, so, so friends lie, but I think he'd make a credible witness. Why? Why do you think that? He's a good guy. I believe his story, and I think a jury would, too. Because he's a good guy, huh? You put him up there, and that jury's going to think he's just another wetback. What you're going for here is good faith, mistaken identity, and you don't want that jury spending any time thinking, who do I believe, the Beverly Hills surgeon or the Salvadorian mechanic? I see your point. Rosie, you have a decent case here, so just stick to your guns. This is a criminal trial. Mr. Angulo is presumed to be innocent. And he remains innocent. Unless our government, with all its vast resources, can prove each and every element of its case beyond a reasonable doubt. Think about that, please. Reasonable doubt. Put someone in prison and to take away his basic freedoms, our Constitution decrees that the prosecution must convince you to a moral certainty that Mr. Angulo is guilty. Now, this case defines reasonable doubt. There are numerous and compelling reasons to doubt that Julio Angulo committed this crime. One, Dr. Atkinson's limited opportunity, 10 seconds at the most, to make an observation. Two, the poor lighting at the scene. Three, the trauma of a gun being pointed in his face. And four, Mr. Figueroa's testimony. In addition, Dr. Atkinson made an identification based on a suggestive and unfair photo array. Out of eight photos, one is singular. One says, pick me. Not because it depicted the real assailant, but because it stood out from the other seven photos in terms of composition, tone, and background. Now, Dr. Atkinson is not a liar. 
and I'm sure he's very, very sincere in his belief. But there is reason to doubt. And a mistake made in good faith is a mistake nonetheless. And the consequences of that mistake to Mr. Angulo are dramatic. You have the opportunity to correct Dr. Atkinson's mistake. You have the opportunity to do justice here. And justice in this case requires that you find Julio Angulo not guilty. Thank you. Voluntary manslaughter? Get off it. There was no intent. It was, it was an adolescent dare. It happens in every frat house across the country. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I'll hold. What's this? What? What? Give me a break. I got witnesses to say this kid had been drinking ever since he was nine. Yeah, yeah, well, call me back when you do know. Hi, it's me, your social secretary. Hello, Carol. Your sister called. She has to cancel. Swollen ankles. But your mother says you should meet her anyway at the club, 5 o'clock. Oh, and Princess Di wants to know if you could join her later for tea. Thank you, Carol. My pleasure. The club, huh? What is this? Looks like a stereo. I don't get it. A fat guy named Ralph dropped it off. Said he was a token of his appreciation. Oh, no, not Ralph Brody. I just got in probation for burglary. You know, I better reopen the file. The club, huh? Don't start with me. Now, what club might that be? The Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. At least they allow blacks, don't they? <laughs> How you doing, Miss O'Neill? Fine, thanks, Clark. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, Kyle. Is she in there? Hello, Mother. Hi. Thank you, Kyle. Did I say 5 or 5.30? I'm late, Mother. I'm sorry. What's the special? Tuesday's always grab. Mm. How are you? Fine. Really? I'm really fine. I know how hard today must have been for you. Not any harder than usual. It's the eighth. You don't think I know how it feels. How what feels? An anniversary, darling. It's a very difficult day after you lose your husband. Oh, for God's sake, Mother, Patrick is not dead. Although there are times I wish he were. And I did not lose him. He dumped me. It's not that different. Anyway, that's why I want to spend the evening with you. I knew you'd need a little moral support. Well, without your moral support, I probably wouldn't even have remembered. Look, I'm sorry. Maybe I did remember. Maybe I'm just in denial, okay? Is that what your therapist calls it? It's worlds apart from you and Daddy. You know, I mean, how could you possibly understand? I'm trying to. But you never let me into your life. Well, I would let you in, except you only want to hear what you want to hear. It's not true. 
Okay. Okay, you want to hear about my life? Yes. Okay. I spend my day with murderers and rapists. I eat chocolate chip cookies for lunch, and I smoke cigarettes, too many of them. And I'm sleeping with a 25-year-old carpenter. <laughs> See, tensing up. I'm not, I'm not. Well, your nostrils are flaring. That's why I go to a therapist's mother. His nostrils never flare. I simply wish that if you needed to talk, you'd come to me the way you used to. So I'm going to some stranger. He's not a stranger, Mother. He's a doctor. He doesn't even know our family. Well, he does now. I guess he probably tells you everything wrong in your life is my fault. Look, Mother, I'd love to tell you it's your fault. But I've done a pretty good job of screwing it up all by myself. Kyle, could we order now, please? Oh, that's nice. You draw very well. Hey, don't worry. I'll try not to, okay? Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendant, Julio Angulo, not guilty on all counts. <laughs> oh, thank you. This jury is dismissed. You did it. No, we did it. <laughs> this court is adjourned. I'm very happy for you. It's funny. I forgot how great it feels to actually win. I can't believe you ever lose. Ben was right about not putting Julio on the stand. I had a strong enough case without him. This is exactly why I got out of corporate law. I'd rather win one for Julio and Gulo than Donald Trump any day. You know, now that this trial is over, you think you might have time for a little break? A break? Oh, right. A vacation. Mm -hmm. Um... It's, it sounds great. It's just this trial has put me so far behind on the rest of my work. I don't know when I'm going to... Come on, would you lighten up here, huh? We're supposed to be celebrating. Right. I'm just talking about our vacation. Why is this damn vacation so important to you? I don't know why, okay? Look, I just thought it'd be a nice thing to do. God forbid I should ever want you alone, away from your work and away from your family. Rosie, I just want you to myself. I don't want to go on vacation. Why not? Because I don't want anybody to have me all to themselves. I don't even have myself all to myself. What are we doing here? No, the question is, what am I doing here? Oh, come on. We're not going to make this vacation a deal breaker. You see, that's a problem, Rosie. We don't have a deal. Oh, Steve, come on! I came to see you. <whistles> nice place. Is anything wrong? Wrong? No, no, no. I just came to thank you. Oh. Well, no thanks are necessary, really. It's my job. Uh, 
Uh, Julio, actually, I was in the middle of something when... Uh, I would have called first, but, um, you were enlisted. What was I gonna do? Uh, how did you know where I live? Followed you home. Have you been waiting outside all this time? Oh, no, man. I went home, got myself cleaned up. I wanted to give this to you. A rose for Rosie. <laughs> well, thank you, Julio. Really, you didn't have Whoa. to do this. Did you really read all these books? Some. <laughs> you know, when they first gave me a lady lawyer, I thought to myself, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it. You're pretty. <laughs> but you didn't look very tough. But today, today, man, you blew him away. You did that for me. Really, I'm glad I could do it. No one's ever done nothing like that for Julio and Julio. You're welcome. Now, uh, Julio, I really do Mind have to get back. Mind if I use your toilet? Sure. It's the uh, first door on the left. like jazz? Some. Do you want a brass? You listen to this stuff? I happen to like Herb Albert, yes. <laughs> Whatever, you got any public enemy? Look, Julio, was there something else that you wanted to say to me? Yeah, like what you did today, that was really something. You said that. And I was right in the middle of... Yeah. You were in the middle of taking a bubble bath. That's how I know you're a real lady. All them fancy little pink soaps. The candle. The perfume. I actually do have work to do, Julio. Okay. No sweat. Mind if I have a glass of water before I go? Okay. Got any ice? Crushed or cubes? Crushed. Hey, that's really cool. I gotta get me one of those. Thanks, Rosie. You treat me right. So, you married? Divorced. Got a boyfriend? Is that what you came here to talk to me about? I don't know. I just wanted to shoot the breeze. We never had a chance much to talk in court. <laughs> Food down the county sucks. Breakfast at 4.30. I can't eat anything that early. Speaking of having to get up early, Julio. You know what I like about you, Rosie? You got class. You treat me like a real person. You listen to what I have to say. You don't act like you're better than me. Like my boss's wife. Rosie. Hey. Listen, I just wanted to tell you about this. I've been thinking about it a lot, okay? Okay. You see... These rich women, these Beverly Hills chicks, they bring in their BMWs and their Jaguars and they act like I don't exist. Like if they touched me, they'd get a disease or something. 
I spend all day on my back underneath their precious cars. Oil dripping in my face, exhaust in my eyes. And I'm nothing to them. You have a Mercedes, don't you? Yeah, but you're different. And I like those stuck up bitches. Why are you here, Julio? What is it you want? I wanted to see you. I liked being with you. Julio, I like you too. But that just isn't the way it works. Why not? Because. Because you and I have a professional relationship. I, I really think that you should go now. Hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm just trying to. liked me. I thought maybe we could be friends. But here you are ready to call the cops. You're acting like you're afraid of me or something. I'm not afraid of you. I'm, I'm just tired. Just a little tired. I don't get it. You get up in front of all those people and you tell them I'm a good old boy. Wouldn't steal nobody's fancy car. Wouldn't hit nobody over the head. What's the matter, loyal lady? You changed your mind. Stop it, Julio. I'm not good enough to sit in your living room, is that it? You better than me? As long as I'm behind bars, I'm your best friend. I show up at your front door. You act like I've done something wrong. You scared of me. Just because I don't drive no fancy car or live in a fancy house by the beach. You are not better than me. as bad as all the rest of them. Somebody else. You know, this is not a game, Rosie. I'm sick and tired of being jerked around. Please don't go. Please stay. I just don't think it's a very safe job. I mean, people following you home? 
You ought to tell the police. Steve, you didn't do anything to me. Yes, but you could have him busted just for showing up here. It's not a crime. What, are you defending him now? I've been defending him for the last two months. And a jury happened to have found him not guilty, by the way. Yeah, well, any guy that just shows up like that's guilty of something. He's not a criminal, Steve. Then why were you so freaked out last night? Because... I... Because things are different for me now, okay? I'm all alone, and I, I just have to be more careful, that's all. Right. All alone. Rosie, why did you ask me to stay here last night? Because I, I wanted to be with you. You wanted to be with me, or you were afraid of being alone? You know, I've, I've, I've never even met any of your friends. We never go to the movies. Hell, we've never even been to a restaurant together. Just give me some time, okay? I don't think it's about time, Rosie. You don't know what you want or who you want it with. You know, you're a pretty open-minded person most of the time. But other times, you're as bad as your mother. I'm not anything like my mother. I don't even know my mother. Exactly. Look, I don't have time to talk about this anymore, right? I gotta go to work. We'll talk about it later. At dinner. I'll make reservations somewhere. I'll let you know. Hey. Big win, huh? Congratulations. Thanks. Seems to be taking a free walk. Call your mother. Hey. Uh, Rosie. This is a no smoking area. Fine. Hey, Rosie. You done great, kiddo. What are you yelling at me Congratulations. Well, come on. Not often we get to come in first. So I hear. Julio Angulo showed up at my house last night. Yeah, what do you want? I'm not sure. I found myself wondering if he'd done what I just got him off for. Why? Because. Because he's brown? Because he's bigger than you are? Or because he uh, showed up at your house when you were alone? He thought I liked him. I do like him. I like most of my clients as long as they're in handcuffs or behind bars. I, I feel like a total hypocrite. Maybe you are. Why do I even talk to you? Maybe we all are. I can't say any of us have many clients we like to see showing up at our house at night. I keep thinking somewhere along the way I did something wrong. Sent out the wrong signals. Or failed to draw the line or something. That's possible. You can't let yourself get involved with them. You can't help but get involved with them. It's a razor blade we're all on. You just do your job and file it away. Words of wisdom for Mr. Bleeding Ulcer? Liabilities, babe. 
Can't do the long jump without getting sand in his shorts. seen you in a coat and tie before. Thanks. All right, can I have a draft, please? Remember that first afternoon when you were cutting the wood from my shelves in the back? Yeah. You were so nice. I'd forgotten what that was like. Anyway, I guess the whole thing took me by surprise. I think I think I know what you're trying to say here. And... Well, then let me say it. I'm not very proud of the way I've been treating you lately, or anyone else for that matter. I hear you. <laughs> Okay, Rosie. It's not the age thing. And it's not our differences. It's me. I'm just not ready for another relationship. <sighs> to moving on. To the long jump. <laughs> 